Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the Back Office Teardown Lab. I have got new equipment today, so I thought I'll do a little unboxing video about it because it was all ordered on Amazon, and I'm going to put the links down below if you fancy your own ones. Oh, there's a bit of paper. I'm just going to whip that bit of paper out in case it has anything incriminating. It doesn't really. So we have this box that says Go Buying and a reel of solder. So I'm testing out some new solder. It's quite thick actually. Um, and this though, this is the more interesting item, I am assured, because this is one of the TS100 soldering irons. And I was torn. I, I kind of like the idea of getting a lightweight soldering iron because I uh, do use a draw tool station and I've used the same draw tool station for probably like, I think, 15 years or something. There you go, nice short lead on the AC adapter, by the way. I didn't notice that. Nice short lead, I don't want it too long. And uh, I thought I'll give something else a try because I'm trying to set up a couple of different soldering stations and I also have the need to go on the road and I do use a USB one for that. And it's pretty good, to be honest with you, but sometimes you need to do something a little bit more realistic, don't you? Um, so I was torn up between, I think it's called the TS-12 or the T-12 or this, so I thought I'd try this out because it said it had a kit that has everything and I'm actually really surprised by the way, right away, look at the size of my hand, I'm, it's tiny. I was expecting a massive pile of stuff because it sounds like, wow, you're getting loads of stuff, but it's, it's so neat and tiny, it turns out, look, it is absolutely minuscule. This is fantastic. I was a bit worried, you see, um, because, what is that, that's the stand? What? <laughs> that's the stand I wonder if that just clips on it and stays permanently clipped yeah it is tiny um, is this what I ordered hmm uh, <laughs> it's quite expensive then for what it is it's like it comes about 60 quid so it's got a decent chunk of cha change I mean you'd probably be uh, able to buy you'd definitely be able to buy one of my the ones the soldering stations I usually buy but let's let's give it a go anyway so that's the iron it's basically a microcontroller accelerometer doohickey. The idea being that if you put it down, it will um, turn itself off. And that's the main feature, of course. Ooh, even a ground lead, if you were that bothered. ESD isn't real. Um, let's choose an iron. It comes with a wedge-shaped iron or a pointy. Uh, let's go with the wedge. Everyone keeps going, yeah, you have to try the wedge. You have to try the wedge. We'll go for a wedge. You can get a whole selection and they're all standards. You can see here, uh, the different shapes and standards, and they're pretty much the same as the T12, which I think is the same as one of the Hakko stations. So they're all kind of based on the same tech. I have seen someone putting those Hakko T12 type parts in this handle, but they're really long, of course. You'd have to, <laughs> you'd have to have a long reach for that one. And I guess I'm going to need the Allen key out of this so I can go a bit further. It does come with a couple of spare screws, which is nice. So what happens normally? My tips end up getting welded into the handles because I never, 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 never really need to change a tip. So I usually just buy spare torches. So this is kind of a bit of a risk for me because if the T12, you are getting a base station and a separate torch and handle. But here, of course, you're not getting the benefit of that. But let's see, that's popped in. And also, of course, the T12 you can buy as a kit. So imagine that the ability to service it out will be really good. There's no batteries in this, by the way, even though you see there's a USB and things. The USB is to plug it in so you can program the microcontroller and set up profiles and things. Now, this screw is not tightening, so already I'm a little bit worried. Should we have a quick look at that before we go any further? There's a screw that's not tightening. So this top screw definitely tightens, but that bottom screw should be tightening, but it's not. Just going to have a look, see what's happened in there. I don't know, you know, I think it's either too short or already threaded. Maybe we should try winding it out. I'll zoom in a bit though, you can have a look. This is not going well already, isn't it? So the case is very plasticky. I have seen that people sell different color cases so you can custom, there goes that screw, different color cases so you can customize them. Um, I'm guessing there's an issue with this particular screw. Let's have another look closely. It doesn't look like it's threaded, but 
may well be. So this thread, this screw though does look like it just covers the bottom. I mean, I can I can push it in actually. It, it's actually locked in and pushed in, so it's it's just threaded or generally a bit crap. Not good, is that? Not good stuff. So we tighten that up. We're going to zoom out a bit so we can see what's going on. Let's plug in the power supply, which is already on. Version 2.8. Press. And there you go. 23, 51, 72, 80, 90, 125. It's heating up very quickly. And I've oriented the chisel the wrong way around, so that's kind of annoying. <laughs> but let's see. Hopefully it should turn itself down just as quickly. So it's keeping it at 300 degrees C. So I'm going to leave it down there while I get the solder out. And one of the reasons I like the idea of these irons too, because the wire is relatively thin, that you don't have to worry about it pulling itself off the table. So you don't need a massive heavy base station to shove it in when you're done. So that could help. I have taken to using a gas soldering iron when I do on the road stuff. And the big issue with that is one apart from the exhaust burning you or burning your surroundings is of course when you put it down it's so dangerous because it's very hot and it's got all sorts going on so this should resolve that so it's still saying at 300 degrees so I'm guessing it's not set to sort of shut down anytime soon but I did read the reviews there are modes on this so you can have it knock off after so many minutes and there you go that's tinning quite nicely. Use my old Brilla pad. Ouch! Now the iron's really light. I tell you it's actually lighter than just a standard soldering iron that I would use. The whole handle, everything is, is light. So what we're going to do, we're going to assemble this which is a Sharp 68, X68000 uh, power supply kit to convert them to use a Pico PSU. And the reason you need to convert them well, you need this board unless you make a circuit. If you follow my video on the Sharp um, X68000 power supply I did before, um, you need an inversion circuit and this board's got one fitted. So it's really simple. I'll hold up the camera so you can see. You just have uh, one of these chips, which is a 74 ls 4 that pops in there and you have a resistor. So there's not much to go on there. And then there's a couple of terminals where you can solder directly to these pads as you need. So it's just something pretty standard that most of us will be doing. I am gonna use that chisel that's parked in the wrong angle while I do this. So it'll be interesting to see how the iron performs in your hand while you're rolling it around. And I'm just going to chop off this because this part is superfluous in this kit. I did a really bad job of that, so I think I'm going to have to just tidy this up. And it prevents, there you go, the Pico supply from clipping in nicely. And that's it, done. So let's just pop that in. So the iron still says 300, so it's not shut down. So I'm going to look in the profiles a little bit later, perhaps, and see what, what we can do with that. But again, this is only an unboxing video, and you saw it come out of the box. You've already got your value. So I'm just holding the chisel there. These are really thick terminals, by the way. Good. I was really worried because it seemed to uh, struggle. It actually did seem to struggle there. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to very gingerly see if I can turn... It's not very hot at the base, fortunately. Let me turn it. There you go. So that's a better angle. I want to turn that so I can see the screen while we're doing it. Because I had a feeling it felt to me like it was going to cool down while it was touching that. So I'm going to zoom out a bit and we're going to both see if we can see the screen while I do the next one. So currently it says 300. And I'm going to hold it on there and I'm going to feed the solder in. It still looks like it's maintaining 300, but it's not getting that heat into the joint. Boom. So if you use those other... Oh look, it's it's not. It's okay, but it's not great right now. Might have to turn that up. Let's have a go. See how you turn up the temperature. Is it A or B? Ah, okay. So let's put it up to three fifty. And is that it? Then we just leave it like that. Yep. Let's go. That's better. Just needed a little bit more thermal mass to get us through there. So what we're not seeing is, because of the way the microcontroller feedback circuitry works, it should be detecting the fact that the circuit is trying to cool it down something chronic, and it should be pumping more power. If you use those uh, T12, TS12, they actually show you how many watts they're putting into the tip at any one, one moment. 
but it's doing the job. I mean, this is not something that you'd want to do all day long with a small soldering iron anyway, these big ATX terminals. It's something that you'd probably just use your regular soldering station for and have it set up for. But let's be honest, most of us are doing doing these jobs fairly infrequently and you just want to know that your tool can handle it and it certainly can, it certainly can. Something I forgot to tell you is I'm using this new solder and this new solder is actually lead free because I usually use a leaded solder so that's interesting too. That has its own issues when you do that. <laughs> if you're used to using leaded solder you're used to a certain way it looks uh, when you're soldering and I'm not getting that feedback. You just got to be able to tell when it's melted. Right, so that's our chip in. And hopefully it won't fall out. There, sorry, rudely interrupted. The kids apparently are making a video. I'm sure they'll do a better job than me. So there's that chip. Let's see now how easy it is to solder that in. It hasn't fallen out. So the iron's still on, it didn't knock itself off. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to struggle, is it, with this? Look at that, that was nice and quick. Let's get it on the flip side. No complaints there. I mean, that's fine, isn't it? That's a mighty fine iron. And we're just going to put the last component in, which is that 4.7K resistor. So if you use this board, you've got power and ground. If you run this without anything on the, the power and ground, it will be on by default. Because that logic is the opposite of what you'd be normally expected on an ATX power supply, which might be useful to use. Just remember that you don't need to hook anything up to control that. Let's just pop this in. So as I said, if you want some of these, maybe Ian, that monster joysticks. That's one for you. Now I'm going to go send this off to Neil over in the retro man cave because I think he needs one of those. And I've done it now. Let's have a quick look at this though just before I sign off, see what else we can fathom without messing too much. Right, so there's your temperature profiles just by pressing A and B. I guess that's pretty obvious. If there's other modes on this, it'll have to be derived from holding those buttons down. So, I mean, tapping them doesn't do anything. Pushing them together at the same time. Nothing so far. Holding both together. Press. Oh, look, look, look we do have different modes. Look, so there we go. That's the voltage at the tip. Factory reset. WK temp. Work temperature. Stable temp. Something. Sleep time. Ah, two minutes. No, that's one, two minutes. Three minutes before it turns off. Idle time. How many um, degrees you want it to step for on the temperature, I should imagine. Off voltage. So I guess if it goes under a certain voltage, it won't try to come on. Remember, you can feed these apparently uh, 12 to 24 volts, and the difference is basically getting a 17 watt iron to a 66 watt iron. So you can just feed them loads of power. So you can see there's lots to play with. As I said, if you plug it in the USB, you get even more options. It's literally got a, like a USB pen drive, and you can talk to it and set it all up. So. What are we calling this? I think this is just called the TS100. I don't even know what the manufacturer is, but yeah, I think it's quite good. It's very expensive for probably for what it is, but if you just want one soldering iron to do all the jobs, that's probably it. Tips are very easy to get hold of. They're big, big right now. Loads of people are making them and you can customize them. What more do you want? Thanks for watching. <laughs>